So I've just screwed up a cutting list and in this video I'll explain why that happened and how you can avoid it. That's coming up next. So if you've seen any of my previous videos you know I'm sort of pretty tight on space in here. It's possibly the smallest commercial workspace you'll ever come across. And because of this it makes sense for me to get my uh, all my boards, all my sheet goods cut for me. I have a fantastic timber yard just five minutes away and they have really conscientious guys on the panel saw. So we get millimeter perfect boards cut time after time after time. The downside of this of course is that I do need to be reasonably together and get a cut list for them to work off. Uh, and this time I just got it wrong. Uh, I get it wrong sometimes. Normally it's just me missing something off like forgetting to put a back on a project or missing a shelf off or something like that. Uh, but this time I actually gave them the wrong dimensions for something and even worse the dimensions were too small so it's not like I can just sort of <laughs> trim the piece back. Uh, it's not the end of the world for me. I've got plenty of good sized offcuts that I can work from and I can just bang through uh, an extra three pieces from those. Uh, and to be honest, even if I didn't have those, I'm confident that the guys at the timber yard would help me out by crashing a few, uh, three extra pieces through for me because I'm a regular and they know that they'll help me out in a tight spot. But it occurred to me how different this would be if I was trying to put something together at home over a weekend without a decent supply of good sized offcuts and no way of getting some fresh boards, then a silly mistake like this could really set a project back. So I thought I'd make uh, this video taking you through the process from the initial design through the working drawings all the way to the cut list. And this is quite long so I've split this into two parts and I've got to confess it's a pretty dry kind of talking head kind of video. There's not a lot of action in this one and I know this probably won't get a lot of views uh, or be particularly popular but I do think it's an extremely important part of the process and there will be more of these to come covering what I call constructional design or the design of how things are put together, how things are made. But they'll come later. Let's start with the basics in this video and that's getting a cut list from our working drawings. So yes, um, <laughs> interesting job. Uh, first of all, my apologies, the overhead shots on the plans here are only in 1080. The horror, the horror. I know uh, my little 4K camera will only run about four minutes before it shuts off through overheating. I'm going to try and resolve that somehow. So that's the first hurdle <laughs> missed in the 4K experiment. Anyway, um, this is the job. Uh, this has been rumbling along for a long time. It's for somebody that I've known for quite a while. I've worked for their parents, I've worked for them. Uh, they have a rental apartment in an older property and they can't do much to the property at all because of that. Uh, and they're desperately short of bookcase space. So I agreed to make some three sort of double bookcases, 1200 wide, 600 high and 200 deep. Uh, and two of the doubles are going to butt together uh, and they're made like this partly to get them into the building because it's upstairs up in the roof space and partly because for a long involved story which is none of our business at some point they may well need to move through circumstances beyond their control uh, and they want to be able to repurpose these in other ways you might want to be able to stack the three of them on top of each other to make an 1800 high by 1200 wide bookcase they'll need a bit of a little bit of shoring up and some brackets and things to hold that lot together, but that's an option. Um, so what what we'd originally agreed, uh, the, the property they live in is, is an older property, so very traditional. So we've gone for this sort of fluted face frame look, which is the same and in keeping with everything else that I've done for them. Uh, and what we had originally was just a very simple, you know, 2400 wide, and a 1200 wide by 600 high, 200 deep, 2400 wide because it fits just within dormer windows. It can't be any uh, higher than 600 because that's where the roof space shape comes in uh, and no deeper than 200 partly just because that's the kind of depth of the books they have and partly they don't want it to encroach too much uh, into their living space. So far so good. The problem comes where you have to actually split this in two because obviously as I've done the face frames like this it doesn't lend itself very easily. Obviously this centre one can come out without too much trouble but I have a particular dislike and so does the client of those fluted face frames that go all the way to the end. They're like sort of uncapped 
uh, guttering uh, in my mind. I just don't like them. So I like to stop the flutes at, at before the end of uh, of the face frame. But in this instance, that isn't going to lend itself very well to splitting these two bookcases together. And obviously, what you absolutely don't want to do yeah, is this kind of thing where you get a double face frame in the centre. That would be horrible. So what I've done is I've changed this around so that the face frames run top to bottom at the ends and in the centre uh, and they can be un unended, open-ended if you like, face frames along the sides. That then lends itself quite well for us to take out this centre face frame if they are if and when they are of a split uh, and then we can just cut these top face frames around. I'll make another one of these centre ones while I'm doing it and maybe another two actually and then they can be added in uh, later on if and when this ever happens. Uh, the whole sort of design is a bit compromised in this way to be honest uh, and there's nothing I can do about that. That's, that's you know, that's part of the design process, part of what we, we have to work with. So where I went wrong then on the cut list was originally I'd had these as very sort of straight sided and then we got into the splitting them in two business and it occurred to me that because, again because of my sort of dislike of, of open ended face frames, with, with these ones coming up to the top I didn't want those to show which meant that the top of each bookcase needs to project over the end slightly and over the face frame and in fact I'd taken the width of the top off the width, the depth of the sides and I had actually forgotten about the face frame so there was already a screw up before this design change uh, and now there's another one <laughs> in there as well. Uh, so basically what we have now, we've got three bookcases made as, as individual pieces two of which will be joined together to make a, a, a one long one and one separate one with an extra face frame in the centre that can be removed so that these can be two discrete pieces. The top will just butt together so I didn't want to use any kind of lipping or moulding on it because when those two are butted together along the top you get a nasty little sort of groove between them uh, which is annoying. Uh, and of course we've got to find some way of managing that centre join. You could just have, if you have the two ends of the carcass, of the two carcasses, you could just plant the face frame over it like that because obviously at the, at the other end at this side it'll overhang. But I think I'd be happier packing that out slightly so that like the base the face frame almost covers the whole thing. You could put an extra on the end here, put an extra piece on the inside, but then you know you're losing a, a book's worth of width then. So, we, and again, when they're split, that just adds to the complexity uh, of of the design of how you repurpose them later on. So we're, we're going to live with a slight unevenness when they're joined together for now. Uh, to make life easier when they're when they're separated later. So strip the face frames off uh, and what we've got basically is three cabinets that look a bit like this. Uh, you know it's the ta uh, total width has to be no more than 1200 because you've only got 2400 when they're buttered together to fit between the windows and you know they can't be higher than 600 mil because of the angle of the eaves of the roof space like this. So how on earth do we go about working out what our cut list needs to be? Well, let's start by figuring out what we actually need. So things we need to know, we need to know the width of the top, we need to know the dimensions of the sides, of the base, of the centre and of the shelves. The top is fairly easy because it's the, the full width at 1200mm, so we know that already. The base is going to be 1200 mil minus this 6 mil overhang at each end minus the 18 mil thickness of the carcass. So uh, 1200 minus 18 and 6 is 
24 doubled is 48 means that this one is 1152. Uh, we need to know the center mark here. Uh, 1152 divided by 2 is 576. We're going to need to know the width between the central divider and the edge. So that's 1152 minus 18 is 1134 divided by 2 because you've got both halves of these is 567 and then for the shelf height uh, width you want 567 minus 2 because you need a little bit of wiggle room to fit on the pins which gives us 565 for the shelf with me so far of course you are